Have you ever wanted to rule the seas of Kerbin? Have pirates ever got you down? Then reclaim those oceans with the Kitty Class Battleship. The Kitty Class Battleship features three 120mm cannon turrets for anti battleship operations. It also features four point defense Vulcan 20mm miniguns and two 50 cal twin link turrets for air defense. In addition, it has a dual laser system for anti missile operations and eight AIM 120 AMRAM missiles are effective against air, land, and seaborne threats. Its power plant is six B9 jet engines, allowing it to get up to insane top speeds with a top speed of over 88 knots, over 100 miles an hour, and over 160 kilometers per hour. This beast is not only deadly, but also fast. So let's put it through its paces. So it's kind of, well, has a lot of parts, right? It has almost a thousand parts. So let's see how fast it can get to. It weighs quite a lot. I think it weighs about 150 tons. And uh, we're just going to see what speed we can get it to for a start. We'll just check out this top speed. So we're up to 35 minutes per second. We're using the smart ass to uh, keep the heading at 90. So the SAS units are doing their job. And... 140, uh, 140, sorry, 44, 44.8, there we go, 45, so yeah, it got up to over 88 knots, over 100 miles an hour, that's insane, of course, it features a lot of, uh, a lot of air intakes keeping it floating, so that probably helps a lot, now bear in mind that unfortunately there won't be any sound on this, mainly because two reasons, firstly, I had to speed up all the footage to try and, you know, avoid the frame rate dying, it plays about three frames per second on my computer, this ship, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do my own sound effects, I think. So we're going to test out its missile defenses. So here we have four AMRAM missiles. And we're going to see if it can actually get past the air defenses. So everything on the battleship has been set to missile defense. And there we go, dropping them all off. As you can see, we have incoming lasers taking them down. And yeah, they've been taken down pretty damn quickly. And then the Vulcan cannons are activating when it gets to about 1.6 kilometers. So 1.6 kilometers is about the closest that one of them got. And, yeah, let's deal with the, uh, the plane. Incoming. Boing. Huh, I think it helps if you arm the missiles first before you fire them. But that works too. That works too. Right, so let's try a different approach. Right, so we've tried four AMRA missiles from, you know, the five kilometer range. Let's try some Hellfire missiles. So basically now we're basically going to saturate the defenses at closer range. This I really don't expect the battleship to do. The issue with BD Armory is everything will target one missile and then it'll move on to the next one after a short period. If we saturate the defenses, especially at short range of a lot of missiles, I don't expect them to work. That said, this sort of range you would have already got fired upon by the missiles and possibly even the Vulcans. So let's fire off all of our missiles at two kilometers. And there we go. So I believe this is eight Hellfire missiles. So let's just see what happens here. Oh, that's one of them killed, and oh, there they go. Yeah, I think we only got one of them, so I think that looked like all seven hitting it. Uh, there's part of the front, and there's the stern of the boat. Wow, that's um, fairly effective. Okay, so let's try some bombs out. So here we can see we're about uh, two kilometers up, so it's a fairly highish bombing run. And we're going to come in on top of the battleship and drop some bombs on it. We've got two on this, and let's uh, let's try it off. So here we go, and drop. Whee! Oh well, it looks like uh, the point defense lasers are even better at targeting bombs and missiles. Huh. Okay, so now we're going to try a dive bomb from much higher up. So hopefully the point defense will be a bit less accurate, and we've also got more missile, more bombs now. We've got four bombs instead of two. So let's try this out. And being able to do a dive bomb means we should be pretty accurate while being at a much more distant range, although I'm having some difficulties bringing the marker on here. Um, hmm, I think we should just drop anywhere at two kilometers, so... Whoa! Uh, that, that didn't work. Um, right, let's try again. We're going to try with more bombs from a... Wee wee. Nope! That didn't work. That didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty effective. Okay, so last attempt. Last attempt. We're going to try a low altitude bombing run. We're going to come up 
Da, da, the stern, because if you come up from uh, the port da, da, or starboard on the bo battleship, you'll be in range of the, the uh, 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons. So we're going to try da, and come da, behind it. Now, the lasers da, da, are still da, da, set to da, da, take out da, da, um, da, da, enemy da, da, missiles and bombs, da, 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 da. but the anti-air turrets have been switched over to anti-air because, well, we're kind of coming in close. So we're going to come 10 meters off the surface, and hopefully the turrets won't be able to get a shot on us because we don't have enough declination. Oh, they have enough declination. Okay. Yeah, I don't think bombing runs are feasible on this battleship. I'd like to see them done but I don't think it's feasible. All right, now let's check against uh, incoming high uh, velocity speedboats. This speedboat is armed with four bombs. It's just gonna ram into the side of the battleship and blow it up. So this is uh, a thing that's been done, but whoa, got hit by main cannon, I think. At least one or two main cannon shells. Yep, so, yep, speedboats aren't a thing. Okay, and let's try for the grand finale, right? Let's let's try out battleship versus battleship. So this is really uh, straining my computer. We've got two battleships here. I'm going to try them out. Now, both of them are set to automatically fire in the other one, so all I have to do is set the throttle and we can switch between them and have a look what happens. So, lasers are set to attack enemy missiles and bombs incoming. Missiles are set to attack enemy ships. Vulcan cannons are set to attack enemy ships, and the main turrets are, in fact, set to attack enemy ships. Now, the ship we're attacking is broadside to us mostly, and we're going mostly head-on. We've got a slight angle, so hopefully the back, ooh, the back mm. turret might be able to get a, a shot on us. Let's see, incoming missiles. Uh, yeah, just arm these. I forgot that the arming turns off when you uh, reload. Okay, so there we go. There's a missile launch. There we go. Cannon firing. I think the back cannon can't get a shot. We might need to change our angle by a couple of degrees and then we'll be able to get a shot. So if we change to 320. 318. Oh, there we go. I think 318. Oh, there we go. So these shots are incoming. Oh, very close. Very close. That was a few meters off the stern. So, firing more missiles, but we're taking them out. See, missiles aren't as effective against the battleships. Oh, those are good shots. Now, where are they coming? Oh, missed, missed. And, oh, that was a hit! The rear gun gets a hit on the stern of the enemy ship. Oh, it, the biggest damage there, I think, was due to the missiles going off. The problem wow. with having armed missiles on deck means that when they go off, they do horrendous amounts of damage. <sighs> Ooh, it might have been better just not to have missiles on these ships if that's going to be the response. Bloody hell. That was absolutely shattered. I think it still had five missiles on deck when that went off. So we've got missiles incoming on the enemy ship. 700 meters, 500 meters, 300 meters, and... Ooh. That's a lot of destruction. Let's go to manual aiming, shall we? Go head on straight into it. Oh, and there are the uh, the air intakes coming back up. See, if you hit the air intakes with enough force, they go below the surface and then they come back up. Um, this can also happen with the ships themselves. If you put enough force into the impact you hit them with. Which is kind of funny. You get this kind of leaping fish motion with the ship. Kind of amusing. So there's part... Oh, oh, we are... Oh, there we go. We were under underneath the water. There we go. The majority of the ship was actually underneath the water. And you can see it leaping up into the air, even though it's about one and a half kilometers distant. Let's fire off all the missiles at it then. And uh, see if we can hit it in midair or something. That'd be kind of hilarious. I don't think the Aram missiles have uh, the Amram missiles have enough uh, maneuverability to really hit a falling target like that. But we'll see. We'll just keep firing the front turrets at it. So here we go. Incoming missiles. And nope, that's a miss. No, they're all hitting the uh, surface of the water. Underneath the leaping hull of the boat. Oh dear. What if we can get another hit? That oh, was good, but I think we may have just missed it. Let's try again. Come on, reload. Come on, reload. There we go. Ooh, that looked good. Oh, yes. Wow, that's a lot of debris markers. Debris everywhere. Now, I think we've somehow glitched it. They look like they're stationary and you can glitch it so that anything you hit with enough force ends up stationary and locked in the world like you can't move it, it becomes physicsless. Uh, and it looks like we're rhyming it. So this is going to be interesting. Boing, boing. I gotta say, for hitting an immovable object, um, the battleship holds up pretty well. It's very springy. The advantage of rubber hulls, I guess. So let's try that again. Just because, you know, I want to confirm it wasn't a fluke. I want to confirm that uh, attacking head-on like this is better than broadside. And I suspect it would be. Broadside offers a much larger target. Whereas if we attack at, you know, the right angle, 
we can actually get all three guns on. And even if we can't get all three guns on, we can still get two, which is two thirds of firepower for about a quarter of the target. So let's try a direct head on, and we'll just go two guns in rather than the three we got before. So let's uh, close the range. I believe we start firing at about load range, which is about 4.8 kilometers, I believe. There we go. So we're through the load range. Incidentally, the load range barrier is pretty damn slow. I've edited it out of this for uh, the sake of, you know, watchability, along with the, uh, the frame rate. So... Let's see, uh, we're firing a few shots. Oh, whoa, that was close. I thought they was going to be a hit, but no, they were just over the top. And you see that they're actually, as soon as the missile's fired, even before it leaves deck, the lasers... Oh! Oh, both front guns, direct hit, slightly to the stern of the conning tower. Oh, it's not conning tower, it's the superstructure, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, it managed to flip the entire ship. Despite the fact the ship has got a lot of its deck intact, it is flipped and it is gone. You can see the sheer amount of intakes we have to have on that thing to keep it upright. So let's just have the final hurrah. Goodbye, kitty class. I thought it came apart there. No, it's still together. Gotta say, Boing. pretty rigid. Pretty impressed with that. Boing. So yeah, this is the kitty class battleship. It's available down below. There will be a link. Please test it out. It is apparently a little bit weak to multiple missile barrages all at once at short range, but uh, overall, I think it's pretty solid. And if you can actually manage to bomb it, I'd be impressed. Admittedly, I did have ca cloud cover, so I couldn't bomb it from a particularly high altitude, but there we go. Anyway, I've been Entralysium. This has been a look at the Kitty Class battleship for KSP. You will need Mech Jeb, B9, and BD Armory. Stay shiny, everybody. And if you've liked, like, and if you're not subscribed, please do.